Hey YouTube, this is Southern Purple One and welcome to Boots on the Ground and news you should know. Let's start off with a small business of the day. And this would be a subscriber that's been watching the channel for a few years. They have a small clothing business. It's called babyblissclothing.com. Babyblissclothing.com. I'll put a link in so you can go check them out. Uh, I'm sure they would appreciate it if you're looking for clothes for small little ones. Let's get right into the news. The Pentagon filed a report saying they have no way to track over a billion dollars in weapons that they have sent to Ukraine. And this would include about 40,000 pieces of equipment. These are highly sensitive. Uh, these could be anything from guns to drones to anti-tank weapons uh, that were sent over there. They're also saying that some of these items that uh, were sent over there have been showing up on the dark net to include the Swiss uh, switch uh, blade kamikaze drones, uh, shoulder fired anti tank missiles. The flow of goods have stopped right now because they have spent all the money that's been authorized. But the Biden administration is trying to get Congress to approve another $60 billion. So, how many billions of this money uh, will be actually wasted or be used by our enemies because they're sold? Uh, illegally. The United States and British military conducted airstrikes and missile strikes against the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, this was a massive retaliation. Um, we will see what was targeted uh, in today and tomorrow, but they were over 60 targets at 16 sites. And these were definitely command and control, munitions depot, uh, launching sites, launching systems, production facilities, and air defense radar system. Experts in the shipping industry, and this would be by boat, um, said that it's very unclear when the Red Sea trading will resume, but this is taking a big toll on a global growth, and they don't know if this problem can be solved in days, weeks, or even months. Uh, so they're diverting their vessels away from the Red Sea, and they have to go around south of Africa. And this is adding a lot of costs and a lot of time. It could take up between two to four weeks more to go from the Europe to Asia voyages. <clears throat> the Treasury Department reported their December numbers for the budget deficit. The United States government took in $429 billion in tax revenues, but they spent $559 billion. And that resulted in almost $130 billion that we went in the hole, we had to borrow. Um, and this is one month, $130 billion. There are some Democrats. The, uh, there's a senator from Massachusetts, a congressman from Maryland, both Democrats. They've introduced legislation called the Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act. And basically what this would do is prohibit publicly patrolling, drilling, or engaging in harmful or deadly paramilitary activities. Uh, it also could include interrupting government procedures, proceedings, interfering with someone else, exercising their constitutional rights, falsely assuming the role of law enforcement, and training to engage in these behaviors. Basically, they're trying to strip us of our right to have a militia in this country. Also, Democrats are trying to target our gun rights. And this is coming in the form of targeting ammunition. Uh, the Washington state has introduced legislation, House Bill 2238, and it would impose 11% tax on ammunition. They would say that owning ammunition is a privilege and not a right. So this would be an 11% tax on top of all of the sales tax, all of the local, all the state, all the federal taxes. And they're saying this is to reduce gun violence. 7-Eleven store. I saw this article. Uh, as a kid, I had fond memories of occasionally, you know, being able to get a piece of candy out at 7-Eleven store. Uh, they have just entered into an agreement with Sunco to purchase another 204 of their stores. I think they're called Stripes Convenience Stores. Um, the 7-Eleven brand, uh, which controls Speedway and Stripes, um, I think they have 13,000 locations. So we see more and more uh, small guys and big guys combining. Um, and this will not be good for the American people. It will definitely be a less competition over the holidays. Um, and you probably saw it when you were checking out. You have the option to buy now, pay later. 
And these loans are hitting an all-time high. Uh, just this year, they were up over 14% year over year over the holidays. Um, the problem with these are these are these loans are not being tracked or counted uh, by credit reporting companies. So as we see, the United States families, individuals uh, have increased their debt be just because of the hard economic times, the inflation. Uh, these numbers aren't included, so we could actually be further in debt. Uh, the American family than what's being reported. Just released, the Biden administration just released this. They're going to start forgiving more student loans on borrowers who have been repaying their loans for over a decade or more and originally took out a loan that was $12,000 or less. To qualify, you just have to be part of the, uh, the administration's plan. Uh, I think it's called the SAVE plan. And this will automatically, next month, they're trying to do it next month, they're gonna to try to eliminate your debt, cancel it. Now, if you're not part of this plan, you can just sign up for the plan and then you'll be able to have your debt canceled. Um, this is definitely a, a, a time, I believe, when they're trying to buy votes. He needs every vote he can get. And by eliminating a lot of debt from people, it is definitely gonna, it, it's gonna influence people on the decision. I hope you're keeping track of the polar vortex that's going to swing down from Canada into the United States. This is going to affect most of the 48 lower states. We could break hundreds of records this weekend or early into next week. So make sure your car is prepared. Uh, make sure your house is prepared. Make sure your animals are prepared for this very, very cold conditions. There was a letter sent um, by a Dr. Uh, Hill Golden. She actually heads up the John Hopkins Medicine Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Health Equity. It was published in their monthly uh, paper. And she basically said that the definition of privilege is white people, able-bodied people, heterosexual people, males, Christians, middle or owning class people, middle-aged people, English-speaking people, all fit the bill that they are privileged individuals. Now, since this came out, there was a huge backlash, and, and they, she had to rescind this and apologize for it. But this is what people believe, that simply because I am a male, I am a Christian, I'm a middle-class person, I'm a heterosexual, I'm able-bodied, that I am privileged. That would be a whole video on itself. Another article that caught my attention was the University of Michigan has developed a very large diversity, equity, and inclusion program. It comprises over 500 employees, costing more than $30 million annually. They actually have 241 staff dedicated to this program of diversity, equity, inclusion. And the additional 500 people, or, or the balance of those 500 people, minus the 240 that just work on that program, also do other, other things on the campus, but they are part of the program. 13 of these staff members earn over $200,000 every year. Another 66 of them make over 100,000, and the average salary for these staff members is $96,000, not including benefits. A lot of money is actually being spent not to build unity in this country, but to divide us. And this is taxpayers' money. Another article, Rice University is currently offering a course on Afrochemistry. And this is going to seek to address the inequalities in chemistry and chemical education. According to the schedule in the catalog, the chemi chemistry class has no final exam and it starts January 8th, running till April 19th. It says students will apply chemical tools and analysis to understand black life in the U.S. And students will implement African-American sens sensibilities to analyze chemistry. I have no idea what they're going to be studying, but it sounds like we need to, as a country, forget if we're black or white, forget the sins of our past, and try to unite more than try to separate ourselves in these little tiny groups. Good news. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals 
uh, struck down the Biden administration's effort to tighten regulations on dishwashers and washing machines. Yes, the federal government wants to control every aspect of your life, every aspect, down to how much water is used, how much electricity is used in your dishwasher or your washing machine. They said that they do not believe the Department of Education has this authority uh, to do this, to regulate water in your dishwasher. They have come to, f to figure out if you try to save power, if you try to save water, and you're trying to wash clothes or dishes, that actually these machines <clears throat> sometimes have to be run twice to get, the, the, to get them clean. Uh, to me, this is not saving money. And to me, this is not the role of government in our lives. Hertz Rental Cars is backtracking a little bit on their electric car plan. They spent a lot of money um, and they're trying to get rid of some of their electric cars because they've realized that these cars have very, very expensive uh, ways to get fixed. The damage, when they get damaged, they're high repair costs. Also, it's a very high depreciation. So they're going to take an actual loss when they're selling some of these vehicles. They're going to lose about $245 million. Uh, they're going to be then replacing these electric cars with good old gas and good old diesel cars. Mortgage rates rose a little bit last month. Uh, they went from 6.62 to 6.66%. At this high rate, people are just sitting on the fence waiting. So this is definitely hurting the economy. And last, uh, U.S. officials are saying that the Hezbollah militants uh, could strike Americans. They could strike definitely in the Middle East, our uh, bases over there, any of our infrastructure over there. But they also said that they have the ability to strike inside the United States. Uh, this ability has been enhanced by the ability, inability to protect our southern border. So because our border is wide open, I can see Hezbollah being able to uh, pull off an event inside the United States. So I hope you keep continue to prep. I hope you continue to pray for our country. Thanks for watching.